right? It already happened in the UK. I mean, you saw what happened with uh, the pension funds that there that were heavily levered in the bond market and were exposed. You know, US pension funds, insurance companies, everybody has uh, levered bond portfolios, uh, but the whole country is exposed here. The whole country has been living off of cheap money. That's been the secret to this phony recovery has been debt and inflation. We've built an entire economy based on debt and inflation. Now the inflation is the problem and you can't just, you know, turn that off. You can't have a foundation of debt and inflation and then build a whole phony economy on top of it and then take away the debt and inflation and not expect the whole thing to come crashing down. It can't levitate in in midair and think about all of the companies that have been financed uh, with debt that would have gone out of business years ago or never would have started up but for the flow of cheap money coming out of the Federal Reserve. You take that away and, you know, everything implodes and, you know, the jobs go along with it. But we've had tremendous malinvestments over the last decade or more when interest rates have been artificially low. We haven't saved enough. We haven't uh, invested enough in real plant and equipment. Uh, all we've done is spent borrowed money and we've speculated. We've funded all kinds of crazy ideas you know one of them unfortunately is is is, is what you're into in cryptocurrencies and bitcoin i mean all this stuff is malinvestment all these companies that are in the crypto space they're all going bankrupt you know you know you, you just told me you're headed out to europe you're going to all these conferences you're going to conferences all of this is a complete malinvestment all of it is going to implode it is all nothing it is all part of the bubble um, you know, there's all kinds of tech companies, too, that are going to be imploding because we weren't doing what we were supposed to do, thanks to the Fed and other central banks and governments. Uh, you know, a, a, the whole economy is screwed up. And when you start to raise interest rates, all of that becomes apparent. You start to see all the problems. It's, you know, the hangover from all the drugs. But, you know, the Fed does not have the stomach for that, just like they bailed everybody out in 2008, just like they did it again in 2020. They're going to do it again, whether it's 2022 or 2023. But this time it won't work because I think this time it'll be fatal for the dollar. That's why it's, you know, the overdose on stimulus because you end up killing uh, the dollar and then it's a sovereign debt crisis and then nobody can get bailed out because when it's the U.S. dollar and sovereign debt, maybe not even just U.S. debt, it could be European debt, Japanese debt, all this debt comes into question because nobody wants to own it because the reality is the public can't pay with taxes and so it's either default or inflation those are the only two choices that governments have and either way uh, bondholders are going to lose well i think when the fed has to do another about face and the balance sheet you know goes up again when the fed goes back to quantitative easing uh, I, you know i mean everybody is going to have to know by then. I mean, I would have thought they'd have figured it out already, but, you know, sometimes you need a safe to drop on your head. And I think people will know that, you know, there's never going to be a shrinking of the balance sheet. The, the balance sheet is going to grow forever and inflation is going to be a problem forever. And now the markets have to readjust to that. I mean, you know, you, you can live with high inflation. It's, it's not good. You can adapt. I mean, they did it in Argentina and other countries, right, where you just have high inflation all the time. Uh, the markets uh, find a way of adapting to it. Uh, but, you know, the politicians do not have the political will to do something about it. Because, again, they've been financing their spending with inflation. That, that's how they pay for all these deficits. We print money. We destroy the value of money and prices go up. That's just the reality. And I, I don't see Congress willing to do what's necessary and the Fed do what's necessary. Now, maybe if we have a real crisis, I mean, if we start to see, you know, the dollar imploding and interest rates soaring, you know, long term interest rates. And, you know, we start to see a complete meltdown of society as a result of, you know, shortages and and, and, and you know, price controls or power outages that, you know, whatever is going to happen and people riding in the streets. I don't know. Maybe they'll do the right thing then. I, I don't know. Uh, but they tend to delay doing the right thing for as long as they possibly can. Uh, and so, you know, it could get pretty bad between now and that that inflection point. But I think if you just look at what's already happening, um, you know, a lot of the signs are there. You know, on one of my recent podcasts, I, I talked about how the fact that 
everybody says they, they don't ring a bell. You know, they never ring a bell at a major top or a bottom. And, you know, my experience is they, they ring a lot of bells. People just don't know what to listen for. They don't hear them. And I, I said, you know, what happened in England? That was like, you know, Great Bent. You know, a massive bell went off uh, there because the Bank of England broke. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you know, maybe they're the first domino to go. But, you know, all the central banks are in the same predicament. Mm-hmm. And, you know, interest rates go up and it's not just a shallow recession. It's a depression. Mm-hmm. Uh, be, and, and, it's, and the problem isn't raising interest rates. That's not the problem. That mm-hmm. exposes the problem. The yes. problem was lowering interest rates in the first place right. and leaving them there so long and allowing all this debt to build up allowing all the malinvestments and the misallocation of resources mm-hmm. because now we have this gigantic mess that mm-hmm. needs to be cleaned up and it's not going to be cleaned up pretty you know there's going to be a lot of losses investors are going to lose a lot of money uh of average americans people are going to lose jobs you know the, the, the free market has to do this to fix what the government screwed up but mm-hmm. it's not the free market that you want to blame blame the government blame the central banks they created the problem. The only way to solve it is with the free market. It's the government constantly preventing the free market from solving the problem. That's why the problem is now so big. You know, it's like, you know, forest fires. You know, you have fires and, you know, there, you know, if you have enough fires, then you don't have a really big one. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, but, you know, uh, but if you don't have any of those small fires, then eventually you get a much bigger one. Or, you know, same thing with earthquakes. I mean, you have a bunch of little earthquakes and then you don't have the big earthquake. You, you release some of the, 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 the stress from the fault or whatever. But, you know, the, the Federal Reserve never allows any of these recessions to run their course. They never allow the market to really purge the economy of the excesses, get rid of the companies that need to fail so we can make room for those that need to succeed. Instead, the government just bails everybody out, props up companies that should fail, replaces one bubble with a bigger bubble Mm -hmm. and the economy never really heals. And and so now, you know, I mean, we're going to have, you know, 10 on the Richter scale, kind of uh, economic earthquake as a result of these imbalances that have built up because government has stopped it. And what's amazing is that so many so-called experts, you know, in academia, on Wall Street and government, they still don't get it. Mm -hmm. You know, like, the reason that I knew the 2008 financial crisis was coming is because I understood mm-hmm. the mistakes that were made that led to the bubble that made that crisis inevitable. Well, all the people that were laughing at me in 2006, 2007, that had no idea what was about to happen, they're the same guys that are just as clueless today. Mm-hmm. They don't understand that everything the Fed has done since the 2008 financial crisis was a mistake as they were, you know, complimenting them. You know, Ben Bernanke was the hero. He was on the cover of magazines. He saved us. He didn't save us. He's the reason that we're in so much trouble. Him and then Janet Yellen and the policies that they pursued instead of pursuing free market sound money policies. uh, You know, we, we inflated these giant bubbles and now we're at the point where we can't do it anymore because now the consequences of the inflation have become a problem. So now inflation is the problem. Well, how do you how do you stop that? Well, you you got to remove all the cheap money, uh, but then now the day of reckoning that we that we refused to deal with in 2008, that we refused to deal with in 2020, now we've got to deal with it. But it's way worse. It would have been much better had we followed my advice in 2008 and just let the crisis run its course. No tarps, no bailouts. Whatever banks failed, they failed. If people lost money, they lost money. Let the foreclosures go through. It would have been much better to have sucked it up and bitten the bullet in 2008 than have to endure where we're headed now. It's way worse.